You bet. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for the city of St. John. We don't always know what may come up in these meetings, although we have an agenda each time. So, we ask that you would give wisdom to those in attendance this evening to hear and respond with your direction. We ask for you to help us discern what is best for this community. Keep our hearts safe during this time as we seek to help the community of St. John move forward in becoming a better, safer place to live and work and worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank, you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Additions to the agenda. Um, Carol and Dunn under citizen comments. Uh, review job descriptions under new business. And bike for Alzheimer's under new business. Are there any other additions to the agenda? Yeah, I'd like to have a 10 minute executive session under. Uh, well, put it under administration. Um, which administration? Put it under John if you want. Okay. Before. Actually, it's. That's fine. Thank you. Are there any other additions to the agenda? So do you. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Motion carries for him. Um, I'm coming here today in the spirit of just kind of initiating some discussion about four topics, not to request any kind of action um, at this time or anything. Um, but four topics related to economic development that have recently kind of come to my attention that I think could also involve the city. One of them I think I can expressed most clearly by kind of telling the story of how it came about. I recently had a person interested in establishing a business in St. John, um, or in South Central Kansas, come here, um, and was looking for a building with certain specifications, wasn't able to find one, not only in St. John, but in surrounding areas, Pratt and the like. And so he was coming to the conclusion that it might make sense to build something. and. Um, so I thought of the what I've always heard of is called the industrial park. In the process of, of learning about this, though, I've, real, I've come to realize that our industrial park is zoned residential. That it's probably got a, a logical reason, as Mel's told me, for that. That at the time that it was zoning was put into place here, that um, the most likely development that was foreseen at the time was maybe a housing development. Is that correct, Mel? Am I characterizing this correctly? So. That's why it, it's come to be that way, but um, I don't, if, if there is intent for ever using it as an industrial park, it might be something to, to you know, revisit or whatever. Um, there is a part of the city that is zoned industrial in the southern part of the town, but um, you know, after looking at who owns things and making some inquiries, I don't think anyone's interested in doing things, something different than what they currently are doing, even if the, the land is vacant. So it's, it's kind of a conundrum as you try to talk to people about possibly locating in a small business here. Um, <clears throat> secondly, um, having adequate daycare for families in St. John um, has been an issue that I've heard off and on before. Um, but I feel like, like with a couple of new closings of licensed home-based like daycare facilities, it's kind of reared its head again as something that's you know a near crisis for certain families. Um, and I'm sure that the re council's logical reaction could be that that's an issue for families and daycares. It doesn't really involve the city, but I think that we're at a point that it is kind of affecting people's choices to live here, and that does affect the city. I had one mom in particular tell me, I work in Great Bend. If I have to take my kids to daycare in Great Bend, why do I continue to live in St. John? It's it's things like that. Um, so I'm hearing this, you know, and the other thing is I'm starting to hear this for employers, too. I've had an employer talk to me about how um, he's foreseeing that this is kind of an issue that's going to affect the reliability or the ability of his of, of employees to be at work when he needs them at work. And um, so... I guess I'd like to kind of um, throw an idea out of trying to do some type of maybe a task force that could involve people like current daycare providers, young families, health department that inspects facilities, 
um, possibly the city, some employers. Um, I think it's a it's a somewhat it's comp more complex issue I think than just putting another daycare into facility or, or in the daycare into existence. Especially if you look at home based daycares, they, they tend to fluctuate. People's lives change. They um, they get sick or whatever, and you lose you lose a daycare. We look at having a center, it's more, that's the part that's probably more complex. If you truly have a daycare center, there's different licensing requirements. And if there's any interest in, in delving into that, I think it's something that probably will require the input of, of many. Um, vacant buildings downtown. That might even kind of overlap into the idea of um, Places that you could put daycare. If there was, a, you know, an interest in having that kind of um, facility near the activity of downtown, we have a lot of vacant buildings, and I know that this is a, a an issue that's been before the city before. Um, but come to the point that there's there's buildings that that might have another good use. But if um, one right across the street kind of is top of mind to me right now because I. I personally look at that as maybe a great location for something that would be daycare-like. And you know, owner in Hutchinson, not very motivated to do anything else, as it's been characterized to me. The reason that he stores his cars here is it gets a whole lot cheaper than similar facilities in Hutchinson. So, um, I, if there's a desire to kind of have a more active approach to managing the town, I might throw out the idea that ordinances might be something to revisit. Um, and the last thing I had is that we've been here to talk about the Healthy Communities Initiative a few times. And um, there's a public meeting on complete streets in Great Bend on April 23rd. That's um, um, something where Great Bend's got a similar initiative going on, and, and we can kind of, I guess, benefit from the, the planning that they're doing to bring in some speakers and so forth. Um, we're invited to that, and Sydney Blanton is planning to come to represent Stafford County, but would love to have um, council members join her. So that's April 23rd, a week from Wednesday, at the Great Bend Convention Center from 6.30 to 9. And I've been told what they're planning to cover is um, the nuts and bolts of complete, what complete streets is, um, how it affects economic development, and different ways to make it work. So complete streets being a concept that a complete street is not just the street itself, it's the sidewalk, pathway for biking, you know, it, it, can, it can be different things in different areas, and I think that's part of what they'll cover, and there's different ways to accomplish it. It's not always a paved sidewalk, although that's one way of looking at it, but anyway. And I guess my, maybe finally, it, this kind of all relates to a concept of, of comprehensive planning. I don't know if the city has ever considered um, that type of process, but it helped might guide some of the things in economic development work if that were it's something that, that um, I wanted to do. And, and if it is, I could probably also um, identify people that can help facilitate that type of thing and, and walk us through it. I have one thing to say, Carolyn. You might talk to Laura Davis because she had a daycare in order right over here, ready to go, and there you it go. got shot down by regulations. Exactly. I know, and that's why I say it's more complex than that because than than just using an existing building. I mean, I know it's probably not what we want to get into all tonight, but I have. A book like this on things that you daycare and and one of the things that I think would be a, a challenge with that building I mean not that it's not suitable to use as a as a, an active building but for daycare in particular it has to pass fire marshal state fire marshal thing I've been told that in that case because it's got an apartment above it it would need a fire wall or like ceiling or whatever in between the two. Retrofitting existing buildings might be impractical. That's where I was headed. Mm -hmm. 
you would like. I can leave this. So, if it would be more appropriate to come back as a specific agenda item on any of these things in the future, give me guidance and I'd like that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks okay, thank much. you. Consent agenda. Approve the minutes of the regular meeting of 4-1-2014. Approve appropriation ordinance 4-11-2014 in the amount of $18,715. Approve appropriation ordinance 4-15-2014 in the amount of $25,072.82. We have a request by Boy Scout Troop number 354 to use the square and a request by library to use the sound system and stage for an event in the square May 2nd, 2014. Are there any questions? Comments? I'll make a motion to approve this as it is. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries for real. Chief Sanders. The only thing I have is I, I had two sheets passed out. We got the ISO classifications back. Uh, one is uh, shows the flow of the hydrants, and then the other one is kind of a breakdown of our score. And if anybody has any questions, I can. It's like 28 pages is the report I got back. So, but this is basically just a breakdown. And we are. How good a score is 51 out of 100? <laughs> About half. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> so Mike, it's a five, and that's what we had yeah. before, right? Right. Mike, does uh, community classification right here equals five? Uh, can you explain that to me a little bit? Uh, yeah, basically it's a point scale from zero to 100. The lower, well, <laughs> the lower than, the higher the number gives you the lower the rating. So, Basically, if you had a 90, you're going to have a rating of 1, which is the best you can get, or a 9, or a, a 2, excuse me. And uh, if you get a 100 out of 100, then you've got the best rating. So, we're basically halfway, same as we were before. Okay, thank you. Does anybody else have any questions for Chief Sanders? Okay, we'll move on to I will say that Mike and I went over his report quite a bit because I was just interested. And there's there's a lot of things similar to like with our audit because of the size of the department and the fact that it's voluntary, a lot of the points they don't get because of those things. We don't have a full time staffed fire station. Or on call. Yeah. Staff. Right. Chief Sarah. Uh, I'd like to uh, request an executive session with possible hire for a part-time officer, probably like 10 minutes, uh, to include the council, mayor, and city clerk, please. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Five votes. Thank you. Keeps your board. Oh, sorry. The only thing I wanted to add, we had a incident business here in town uh, sometime last night where somebody shut the power off and cut the phone lines, we believe, in an effort to cancel out the alarm. Um, so I just want, you know, I know we got business owners on the council and whoever in the public might be watching or something to kind of keep an eye on uh, that kind of stuff. We don't, they didn't actually try to gain access into the business. I don't know if they got scared off or what happened, but um, and I was made aware also by Jonna that they had some similar incidences in Salina. I mean, there's obviously no way of... No way of knowing if that's related, but it has happened to us more than once before where people were traveling up and down the highways and any of the stuff. So. Yep, that's it. Was this was it on the highway or was it down there? Yeah, it was on the highway. Um, I can't think of anything really too much. We're working very hard on Jubilee. I did put um, a schedule just there with your other paperwork for you to so you're aware of what's going on. There's always chances that that will change, but it is now on the website. Um, the 5K run is a new addition this year that Doris is doing, um, and we're 
hoping to have a glow run slash walk family kind of thing after dark. Maybe the Tiger Trail or whatever that's not um, been finalized yet. But so there is a beer garden. Yes. Beer on here. I haven't got a firm yes yet. I have somebody that I'm speaking with this weekend. We've agreed to meet. This we did not have a nonprofit organization step up. We're just too small, I think. The two big enough have, are burnt out. <laughs> Doesn't that beer garden have to be done by a nonprofit organization when it was passed? No. It doesn't. It just, the first time it was passed was by, for the VFW. And it has to go to the scholarship for the kids. It was not made in the motion that way. I checked, I went back and looked through the minutes. I asked Sean to go back and check. Mm -hmm. okay. So did we put this out for anybody to be able to apply for this? I had just now, um, not any individual. I've had it out for nonprofits for a long time. And we're just to the point <coughs> that we've got to do something. We can't wait any longer. And I did have somebody earlier on contact me who seemed very interested and I felt probably could do a, a good job of it. That's why we're still going to meet and see if uh, he thinks he truly can or if we need to continue to look. At this point to put it out I think would be, it's just too late. You know the hope was that we'd have a nonprofit step up and we can continue to look throughout the next year for a different situation but if we're going to have it this year I don't think we have a lot of options at this point. Of course the other option is to not have it. about that, that, that would be the other part of it, is if we can't find a not-for-profit to do it and we don't want to let somebody to do it for profit. Well, I'm not saying it's a bad deal to let somebody do it for profit, but we're not everybody had the opportunity is the only thing I'm saying. I agree. That might get us I a lot of... Well, all I can say is next year we can do it differently. You know, we ask every year for people to help us with Jubilee and we don't get it, so um, if we have somebody who's willing to do it, and they've come forward, and if you want to open it up next year in January to try to find an individual, then I'll agree, that's great, but I don't think five weeks out is the time to open it up to public. Mike, the scholarship that you guys used that money for, whoever used it for, yes. are you still going to continue that? Scholarship. We're going to try if we can find another way to make some get donations. I mean, we still have money left from the uh, beer garden in the past. Last year we didn't make any money, but the years before we made money enough to uh, have to give a scholarship at least this year. Okay. Or two scholarships. Wasn't that wasn't that proceeds off that beer garden go to a scholarship? That's what we were always told. That's the way I understood it too. And, and the VFW the when they came, I think, said we we will do this and the proceeds will go to that. In the motion it is not specific to going to scholarships. Okay. If it were in that case we would just not have one this year because we don't have somebody that's gonna a non profit that has enough people to do it. The council <coughs> has to approve their temporary liquor license. Mm -hmm. Have we done that? We don't have, I mean that's one of the discussions this weekend with the gentleman that I'm going to visit with. Right. 
he will have a background check and we'll go over all the laws and the do's and don'ts of having beer cells. Right now, I'm not sure what they'll be. I'll be working with them to make that happen. Make a motion to allow them to use a bicycle or a square for a bike. We're all talking. Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Is there any additional business? If not, I would I'll make the motion to here. Second that. Motion carries. Um, our, our seniors here need signatures. I would be more than happy to sign all of them, but I think it would be nice if council would stick around and help sign. 